guys, and welcome back to the Totally Random Talk Show. Uh, if you don't know, we're currently doing a letter topic segment, so we're going through every letter A through Z to just kind of pick a couple random topics to choose and just talk about them for a brief little moment. Um, so we're going to kick it off with the letter W today. And uh, also, you may notice the audio quality sounds a little better. It might just be because we are both here in person today, so... Yes, sir. We are going to be sharing the microphone. It'll be great. All righty, let's start off with our first topic. Max, would you like to go ahead? All right, you all love them. They're just pancakes with a six-pack. Waffles. Mm, such mm. truth. <laughs> Honestly, I like waffles better than pancakes. I think waffles are better because you get a nice proportion of uh, syrup in each little square, right? And then if you put butter in it, it has great proportion with that too. And then you're not going to have syrup falling off the pancake and drooping everywhere on the sides of the plate. And then you're not wasting your syrup, right? It's all going in your mouth. Might not be as healthy, but who cares, right? <laughs> See, you got a point. I think with waffles too, if you really want to get very, very specific, you could put uh, syrup in specific squares you know, like every other square, make it a checkered waffle or whatever you want. <laughs> I think I think that's a really great idea, actually. I might just try that. You could do um, uh, syrup in each individual square, and then you could put butter in the other squares. So you have syrup and yeah. butter proportion. A lot of butter. <laughs> a lot of, fill the entire <laughs> squares with that's butter. That's too much. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. So w what kind of syrup or are you, like what do you like the most on waffles do you like maple syrup like buttermilk or like fruit syrup so mm -hmm. i know i know that people are going to be like oh no eat healthier eat your veggies and stuff but um i really like buttermilk syrup in mine i think it's like one of the best syrups that i've had but i also really enjoy um like blueberry syrup and raspberry syrup and things mm. like that those are always really good yeah, I, I'd have to agree. I think maple is pretty good just because it's the classic, but right, like raspberry syrup specifically, honestly, like that's probably the best with buttermilk too. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about waffles. They're just that good. Little things. So I'm one of those people that believes that waffles should be made in a – I believe it's called a Dutch waffle iron. Yeah. Like Dutch waffles. Um, basically, like, if you go to a hotel, if you've been to a hotel before, you'll know. Um, they have the giant waffle makers that make, like, the giant circular waffles that are about the size of, like, a paper plate, right? They fit perfectly in a paper plate. And um, I don't know. I just think that is the superior way to cook a waffle because, like, it, it, it just – it tastes so crisp, right? Because, like, it's built so that it makes it nice and crisp and toasty when it comes out. And it's all steamy. And the inside's soft. And uh, I'm hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I I would say that that is the only way to go. Dutch waffles. Yeah, actually, you can get, like, packaged Dutch waffles. Like, they're, like, Stroop waffle kind of. Yeah, I don't know. That's what they call them. But it's basically like has some syrup on in the middle that's kind of like solidified a little bit, so it's nice and sweet, and you just bite it like a cookie. Mm -hmm. Those are so good. And uh, there is some there is some difference between a actual Dutch like Stroop waffle yeah. and a like a Dutch waffle iron. I think it's called a Dutch waffle iron, but don't no. quote me on that. Last time I checked, that's what it was, but I could be very wrong. So <laughs> I, I want to get that out there really quickly. Anyways. Is there uh, anything else you'd like to say about waffles? Waffles are good. Especially with fruit and whipped cream. Uh, yeah, we actually didn't mention that before. But I, are. I, I never really put like fruit and whipped cream on my waffles, but I really like to do that because it tastes so... Like bananas. Delicious. It, it tastes strong. bananas. I know. Well, what was... Okay. Like... Bananas, strawberries, whipped cream, some powdered sugar. Mm. It, it, it's good. Powdered sugar. <laughs> <laughs> so processed and 
healthy. And on a lot of desserts. Yeah, on uh, a lot, actually. It makes things look beautiful. It does. It's like snow. It, it's literally just sugary snow that is dry. <laughs> Dried snow? <laughs> Dry. <laughs> it wasn't possible until now. We are uh, we are in a day and age where we are advancing uh, a lot. So you start to see weird things a lot more often. Hence, water, dried snow. Water that has is not a liquid, and not a solid. Uh, the the Quite water water that like you can hold, like the like the little water like, ball things. Well, if, it's, if it's dry, well, like, wait, would it be a powder? It's like powdered water. <laughs> wait, like dehydrated Do you water? Like just add water or like yeah, what? Wait. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> That's just an empty thing. Like if you had an empty cup. It's just dehydrated oh, water. Just and add once, air. Once you add water. Wait, that, just... I think that could actually be done. Because, okay, so think about it. If you if you think about it, uh, water is, uh, well, the scientific notation for it is H2O, right? H2 means there's twice the hydrogen, and O is oxygen. So hydrogen, two, and oxygen makes water, right? You could just have a bunch of hydrogen, right? And then half as much oxygen? Or, like, zero at all. So when you open the cap, there's a chemical reaction, maybe, and, uh, like, the oxygen mi- mixes with it, and it makes water, right? Hy- hypothetically? I don't know, because it depends on how much oxygen is in the air. It's only yeah. about 21% of yeah, most, all air. Most I don't of know why I remember that. In but. the air. In fact, I think it's 77% of our air is uh, made up of nitrogen. Yeah. And then there's 21% uh, oxygen, and then there's like a 2% of random stuff. But what if you just had, like, powdered, powderized hydrogen and oxygen, if that was even possible, just hypothetically, and then you added water to make more water? Like, it, like it, that's that totally is not scientifically correct, but just imagine. Yeah. And also... Don't think that just having hydrogen and then, like, opening it up to oxygen is going to actually make water. That is, like, yeah. literally impossible. <laughs> yeah. It was a hypothetical thing. So just, just getting that out there, we, we cannot take two elements or and else. make a new element with elements. The thing is, at if, the that, moment. if that did happen just naturally, then that would mean that any two elements that can, that can combine and be combined would just combine. And so then you'd have, like... I don't know. You just have byproducts of everything. It would be really bad. The only way that we know uh, how new, like, uh, elements can be created is with, like, the sun. That's literally, like, the only way. Fusion. (laughs) Like, nuclear fusion is something that we know exists, but we just do not have the firepower to actually do it. Once we figure that out, we're set. We're literally set. There's nothing else we would need. Yeah, but we we have not <laughs> succeeded in doing that at <laughs> Probably all. Probably won't for a while. But I want to go back to water because our next topic does have to do with water. It's whales. Now, you may be thinking, well, there's two types of whales. That's correct. The animal and the place. See, they're both surrounded by water. <laughs> so <laughs> so we're going to talk about both. <laughs> Let's let's start off with the country. How about that? We'll start off with Wales, W A L E S. Now, I've never been to Wales and I don't know too much about Wales, but what I do know is that their language is really strange and their flag is amazing. It's a dragon. How cool is that? Like nowhere else. It's, it's insanely cool. I I would rock that flag. Like I'd have it as a cape if I could. Yeah. But I I don't live in Wales, so I don't think that's very good. It's not respectful to their flag. I don't even think that's respectful to any flag, but it would be cool. (laughs) Very true. Um, A couple things about Wales. If you guys want to know where it currently resides in geography, um, it's literally right next to, like, England. So, like, the United Kingdom. part of the UK, I think. Wait, well. The UK is an island, right? It's a giant well, island. The UK is like the group. So there's like there's 
England, then there's Great Britain, and then there's England. And there's a difference between each of them. And I can't remember exactly. But what I do know is that North Ireland and Ireland are separate in some of those. And mm-hmm. it's just basically a group of countries. Yeah. It's weird. Essentially, um, Wales is a country of the UK, but it's on the western side of the island. Not, like, separated, not on a different island. It's it's on the west side it's of it. It's directly across, or it's directly east from Ireland. Yeah. So, essentially, if you pull up a map, like, it'll, it'll be right there. Um, but another cool thing about Wales is, like, uh, they have a lot of really, really beautiful scenery, for one, and a lot of castles as well. Like, a lot of... Of castles. <laughs> Someone was building a lot of castles. Some giant was having a lot of fun building with Legos. Before they were invented. <laughs> exactly. No, they, they were invented. It's, it's called taking mud and straw and making a brick. Well, yeah, but not Legos specifically. Mud bricks, shirt, <laughs> stone. The original Legos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cavemen had Legos way before we did. They just outsmarted the system. Does that mean Lego is going to get sued? By history? <laughs> Some caveman time travels and sues Lego. That that would be a you good movie plot. my idea. <laughs> Someone please make a movie about this. I want to watch it. And they have to. What has to happen is the caveman has to be speaking a different language that we don't know anymore, except for this one obscure scientist who speaks the language. And so they bring it, bring him in to translate everything. He translates what this guy's saying. He's like, "I'm suing you because I copyrighted Legos," and, <laughs> and then he brings out this brick that. Is like, like, like an adobe brick. Like <laughs> thousands of years old, and it says Lego on it. And somehow he's invented the alphabet before anyone knew about it. I just realized. Before the English alphabet came out. And he knows... No, it says Lego in his uh, native tongue. Yeah, but but he made the alphabet to write that. He figured out writing before anyone else. That's that's fair. Since what if what if it was like what if it was like a Morse code thing, like something like that? that Morse code wasn't invented until later. I know, but like, what if it was like like dot dot, like a picture? It's a picture. Yeah, it's it's a picture. It's a picture of a leg like dot, and dot, an dot, O. L. <laughs> like a circle, and it's just supposed like, like it it it, it like he just thought oh because you, because you make that sound with the O. Oh, then that's the, what he I do. He draws a picture of a leg and then a leg. Oh. And, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, back to whales. <laughs> Moving on to the other type of whales. Wait, unless you have anything else to say I about Let's see. Apparently, they have lots of national parks. And wait, I'm wondering what um, form of government do they have? Oh, yeah, yeah. What's a uh, form of uh, fork? <laughs> Let's find out. Um, so they have a parliament and a constitutional monarchy. So I think that's the same as um, England because England they do have a monarchy. They have a queen and princes and princesses and stuff, but they also have parliament that actually like makes laws and everything. So. I guess the monarchy is more of just a national symbol. They do they do some things, but it's not quite as much as they used to. Mm-hmm. And then I I guess that makes sense, right? Because it's still um, a type of government used today that's actually really effective in getting things done. And so I think that's pretty smart to just have both. Yeah. Although I guess now people want more freedom, which is a good thing. You just I guess parliament is a way to do that to make it more like a democracy mixed with a monarchy versus like a true monarchy where there's one person in charge because mm-hmm. mono is means one so monarchy is one in charge right same with other well yeah it, it's slightly different than like a dictatorship and stuff but 
if mono we means one, why don't they call a unicycle a monocycle? Because una means one as well. But that's dumb. But the Greeks don't care, and Romans don't care. That's true. <laughs> and they're all, they're but all ancient. Doesn't that peoples. mean that if I called it a monocycle, people would be like, "Oh yeah, yeah," and they'd understand? Probably, but they'd also look at you weird because they would be so confused by why you would say that. Hey, check out my monocycle, bro. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you insult my unicycle like this? You cannot let my children hear this. <laughs> Just cover some it's random a kids. Unicycle. Ears. Like, it's, it's like that um it's like that one ad uh what's it uh where you can switch and save in to get the uh s22 ultra um t-mobile the uh, yeah, verizon the, the, the something some, some phone company the but like he's Service. like i could trade any phone in even this and oh like, <gasps> yeah no, i think that is How that is could you? yeah i've seen that i know what you're talking about it's and okay, people. They like I trained for this. Out the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It's I see that like every day. I hate it. I would just bring in a flip phone and then be like, can I trade this in? <laughs> like, this is 30 years old. No. You, you but bring, you said any phone. <laughs> you bring in the first phone invented. And <laughs> and just the like, brick. <laughs> <laughs> you bring in an Adobe brick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, with Lego on it? <laughs> it's a brick phone. <laughs> or rotary phone, too. You could get one of those. No, no, no. You got to go back to, like... The gramophone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You hold you hold up the thing to your ear, and you have the speaker. And then you're like... <laughs> operator, operator. Give me the line one. The telephone. Line one. The telephone. The line one. Uh, sorry, this is, this is, I'm calling you on my telephone. Oh, this is line one. Oh, oh, you're calling. Oh, oh. Okay. I don't know how this works. This is the first time I've I'm used going to assume that old telephone. people say that. Like, <laughs> yeah. he- hello, telephone, telephone. Like, hello. <laughs> is who's speaking to me? Uh, uh, where are you in my house? I'm nowhere. Uh, well, how are I'm, you? Sp- I'm on the phone. What is this witchcraft? <laughs> How are you speaking to me through this contraption here? What is this? Telephone. Telephone. <laughs> People probably had a really fun time with that. Like, But they did have telegraphs before then. So. That's true, I guess. But that wasn't as that was fun. That like email. Cool. <laughs> but not quite as advanced. Picture like, being able to talk to someone for the first time. And they're like across the United States, and you're talking to them at the same time. And now we just do it all the time without even thinking about it. We don't even realize the fact that we are like so blessed. Maybe, maybe you do think about it, which in that case, like that's that's awesome. Like that's really cool. Um, but a lot of people just take it for granted the fact that they can actually call people anywhere in the world and like be able to connect with them. Like that's insane. And now we have video for it too. Yeah, and like, technology's crazy. Yeah. And so are whales. So are whales. The animals. The Just, animal whales. Yes. Because I guess you could tell by by the grammar I'm using. If I said whales is cool or whales are cool. Whales is cool. Whales are cool. It works. Whales in whales are cool. <laughs> 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 Anyways, I don't know what really to say about whales except for that they're huge and they tend to eat people in stories. But they actually don't really eat people. They could. They could, but they and don't, don't want to. I think the only reason why they would eat a person is on accident. Yeah, they're probably they're, just vibing. If they're getting the brine <laughs> shrimp, you know, because they got like their weird little teeth. They're just like... Yeah, they look like <laughs> yeah. Oh. We've all seen Finding Nemo. We know how scary their mouth is. Yes. It's very scary. You can't find Nemo if he's gone forever. You can't find Nemo if he's in a whale. A well? A whale. Is he doing well in the whale? He's doing well in the whale well. The whale of the whale is doing well? 
He's doing well in the whale's well of whales. Would you say he's having a whale of a time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, whale, you please stop. <laughs> well, you're going to have to keep asking because I'll just keep going. Whale-tastic. <sighs> Whaley. <laughs> I've got a whale of a tail for you. This is a little bit fishy. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, now that we've bored you with our whale tail... Well... So, wait, what? What? <laughs> no, just let me let me restart. Okay, now that we've bored you with that the puns, why don't we move on? <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Just like how whales live in water, our next topic is all about water, and just like whales, it's also about fun. <laughs> whales are fun, okay? <laughs> We're talking about water parks. <laughs> I love water parks. In fact, we went to a water park today, and they are so much fun. They were great. Um, so we have a water park uh, pretty close to us called uh, Splash Summit, and I'm sure that we've talked about it at some point on this podcast because we really like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there is one ride in particular that is probably – well, I'd say it's my favorite. I don't want to speak for you too, but um, it's called Free Fall. Yes. And it is what the name implies. It goes straight down. And you're either on a mat or on your back. The mats are better. The mats are better because on your back just hurts. Yeah. But with a mat, you do go face first, which makes it more awesome as well. So. Yeah. And then usually when we go down, the second person to go down can high five the first person that's waiting there. It's Pretty always epic. awesome, except sometimes you flip over, and then sometimes it just ends bad. Yeah. But it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And there's lots of different types of water parks. There's some that are just with pools, some that are indoor, outdoor, some that have slides, some that have even, like, a bunch of hot Lazy tubs. River, like hot River, Whirlpool, Hot Springs. If you've ever been to any hot springs, I'd recommend those. It's just really interesting. Naturally heated pools. I of once water. went to a hot spring where the water was 114 degrees, and it was steaming hot. Like I saw this guy who was in there, and he was like he had, uh, like basically just a speedo and his little cap. Uh, he looked like an Olympic swimmer, and he was just going at it. He had his goggles on. He was like diving in the water, and I'm like, how are you living? How how are you surviving in this water? I can't even, like, put my legs in there. Like, it's so hot. Yeah, Ooh, this is crazy. I don't, I don't even know how you do that. But then, me and Max, we went down uh, down south for the winter, and <laughs> just like the birds, <laughs> and we, we stayed at this uh, nice, like, what would you call it? It's a, it's a resort. With, resort? We rent like a house there's yeah a bunch of houses and the whole neighborhood is basically owned by by a company that rents them out yeah and since it's down south it's nice and warm right even in the night however the pool was not <laughs> they they had a nice big hot tub that was real nice and warm and toasty but then they had like a a pool and a lazy river and <laughs> We're like, oh, that lazy river looks fun. No one's in it. I wonder why. We step in, and I kid you not, it is the most freezing water I have ever set my <laughs> foot into. It was, like, we we guess it was probably almost to the freezing point because there was some of the water that was frozen over. Mm -hmm. Like, we literally were walking in the water, and, like, ice was breaking it, it was like over the top. It was, it was bad. It, it was so cold. And you know, since it's a lazy river, to I guess it wasn't really moving. It was still water mostly, but still, right. the, where it's to the point of freezing, and it's a pool, and we were in a place that usually isn't that cold. Like 
if the pool was heated, it would stay pretty warm. And, like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. It, it, it was so cold. <laughs> and and we started by just putting our toes in for a second. And there were also there was another pool that had a slide. So then we got to the point where we went in the slide, went right down into that water. And we just kept getting more and more ridiculous. With our and dares. eventually we went around the lazy river multiple Twice. times, <laughs> just stood in the water. And, at, and there's a certain point where you're just numb and don't feel a thing. And you jump in the hot tub and it just scalds you. <laughs> it's really bad because, like – at the point where you go numb, like you literally cannot feel your feet or your legs at all, and they're just like, you feel like you're using stubs, like, <laughs> like literally, you like know, your legs are no longer legs; they are stubs. I kind of wonder if there's any way we could experience that again, though, because there is actual science behind that being a good thing for you for multiple reasons. First of all, the coldness of it can help your muscles. And like, I have a way that we can recreate it. Yes. Go back next uh, winter. It's probably been fixed. I hope not. <laughs> yeah, you hope not. Okay. I love the cold water. <laughs> yeah, but like, if you think about it, athletes use ice baths to help relax their muscles and help so that they don't like. Isn't it like release tension? Yeah, or release tension. Yeah. It, 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 and since it kind of numbs you a little bit, then. But it's it's not like a bad thing that it numbs you in that way because it's not like completely numbing your pain. It's helping you get back from. It's like you know if like you put an ice pack on a bruise or any or something or whatever, then it helps you get better because it's really like helping you get better blood flow and everything. I guess that's true actually. Yeah, but ironically, if you drink cold water, you're gonna decrease the blood flow because it's just gonna make your like veins shrink. So like. A lot of athletes will not drink cold water. They'll drink warm water while they're doing stuff so that they have a good circulation. Huh. I never knew that. Warm water is good for you, no matter how much you hate it. <laughs> All water is good. I love water. I'm so addicted to water, I die without it. I haven't gone a day without water in my life. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Dasani, what's what's their? No, no, don't, no, we're not sponsored. You're right. We're we're sponsored by water. Just drink tap Period. water no, if it's safe where you live. Check that before you do that. We we sponsor or er, we're sponsored by water. Period. From Earth. From Earth. We're sponsored by Earth's nature and <laughs> water and things that come from the Earth. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, back to the cold water being healthy for you. Another reason it's healthy for you is, well, so at first we were really terrified of going in that water. We didn't want to. It was something that was difficult, hard, scary, lots of emotions, right? Yeah, for sure. And and we definitely like, we'd put, like, put a, even like a toe in the water and just get out and instantly go to the hot tub. But as you overcome your fears, as you try and try again for things that are good, of course, maybe like for this, it was maybe good that we were able to overcome our fear just to have a feeling of accomplishment. That's a very healthy thing. Being able to overcome your fears by repeatedly trying to get over them could be a good thing. Depends on how you do it. And everyone's different. So again, I guess it depends on who you are. But for us... By trying over and over and doing crazier things in that water, eventually we weren't even scared at all, and it was fun. Yeah, there there came a point where we just like dove into the water because we were like, you know, this isn't that bad. And then we got in the water and we were like, no, this this is bad, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, jump in cold water if you have the chance. Just don't get hypothermia. Or, yeah, try an ice bath or something. Because usually if you're going to do an ice bath, it's in an area where you can control that and not get hypothermia. Yeah. Don't just – don't go to some, like, frigid cold don't area go to and jump in and the take water. a lovely little dip in the ocean. Yeah, Please that's don't. not a good idea. Don't do that. Because that water is definitely colder than 
Because it's like frozen over with feet yeah. of ice. It's 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 really cold. Yeah. So, anyways, um, what's a what's a good segue from this? Um. Well, okay. I actually have the perfect segue. Okay. So, if you know anything about history, then you know that there were lots of religious Puritans that came to America, and there were some people that they really didn't like. And they would, and they thought that they would float in water. You might say that they had a heart of ice. Now, these people that we're talking about are witches. And let me just tell you the reason that they thought that witches would float in water. Now, I haven't seen Monty Python, but I know that in Monty Python, they talk about a witch floating in water, correct? Yeah. Okay. But the real... I, and I don't know if it's like I don't know the reasoning behind that <laughs> in in Monty Python, but the reason that the Puritans at least thought that witches would float is that they thought that water was a holy and pure thing, and so w- righteous people would be would sink to the bottom, and then witches who were of the devil would go to the top because water would discard them. But everyone floats naturally and some people are better at floating than others so it's kind of at this point like it doesn't really work so they would just like hang people for floating (laughs) it's kind of ridiculous actually a lot of them just like perceived certain things as being witchcraft too like literally if um i don't know you had a child but you didn't die people would be like you're a witch (laughs) like Because, like, back then it was common for people to die in childbirth because it was, like, you know, it was really hard and it was actually kind of sad. But, like, it's not just that either. Like, they would find, like, the randomest reasons for uh, finding that someone's a witch. Like, I don't know, say, like, someone keeps stealing your crops but you don't have evidence that they're stealing your crops. So, like, they're a witch. And then they'd burn them or something. Yeah, or, like, even at that time period, like... Usually, a witch would be a woman, and the reason is because men in that time period had more authority over women, whether we like it or not, and so women who were smarter and who maybe even, like, read a book or anything, they were perceived as being a witch because that was something that they should have not done, which is really sad, and so there are countless innocent people who died because... They, I don't know, were reading a book, were curious, or even answered a question. Or even like in, well, if you've ever read The Crucible, um, by, I can't remember, who's the author of The Crucible? Anyways, um, so The Crucible is a book, it's a, it's a play about this time period where there's witches, <clears throat> and it follows a few characters that are, that have some creative liberties and everything for the book and play, but it does have some accuracies to real people. And in it, there's this one lady who tells this guy who has this pig that if she, if or sorry, if he doesn't feed the pig, then the pig is gonna die. And then of course the pig dies because he doesn't feed it. And then he sees and and he gets another one, and she's like, the same thing is gonna happen to all your pigs. And she's just making an observation that he's not feeding them, so they're going to starve to death. But then she gets accused of being a witch because he thinks that all the pigs are dying because of her. Just because he can't think common sense that pigs need to eat food. (laughs) I think back in this time they didn't have uh, correlation versus causation, uh, which is a really important thing with today, especially with science, right? Uh, correlation is essentially two things that seem to correlate or kind of connect connect in some way, right? And then causation is where you believe that one thing causes another, right? Or something causes a, causes another thing to happen. Uh-huh. And so, like, in this instance, uh, it would be a causation, right? Because they'd think, oh, this person's a witch. Wait, They're or correlation, I think, right? Well, well wait. They think that this person is the cause of... Like all of their oh, pigs yeah, dying. Well, isn't causation when when it actually does cause that thing to happen? Like for example, um, 
Yeah, wait. Well, let's let's make sure we're the action of causing something. Yeah. Okay. So like, so an example of causation could be if you put your hand on a hot stove, it's going to burn you. But a correlation could be. Well, wait. What's a good example of correlation? Um, oh, I I guess I want the more cheese people eat, the more people die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or something. Like that was actually a study that was done. Um, they they did the study for uh, pounds of cheese uh, versus bed tanglings, like deaths, mm-hmm. like, and so it showed that people that got like tangled in their bed sheets and died that way uh, had tended to eat more cheese. So therefore, cheese makes you die via bed tangling, but that has nothing to yeah. do with that at all. But in reality, it depends on, I guess, yeah, if more people enjoy eating cheese or whatever, whatever circumstances that have nothing to do with them dying. Right, and like you can't just throw random stuff like that out there because like it's not true like where do they even get that information from that's what i want to know yeah that's kind of messed up (laughs) so i don't know a lot of a lot of the stuff that they came up with back then was more of just a correlation than anything that was actual and real it was really stupid (laughs) yeah so um moral of the story do not make inferences based off of two things that may not intersect at all yes <laughs> that's all i have to say make good observations <laughs> so so yeah anyways i guess one last thing i have to say about witches is that there seem to be mostly halloween thing now and like in a lot of movies and stuff like witches the movie or book roll doll and also hocus pocus and i'm trying to think of any others well i mean the crucible actually mm-hmm. that is a movie but those aren't actual witches those are people accused of being witches yeah um i think most of it is just halloween but like there's also a big history side to it that like is actually really sad because like most of those people were not witches at all some of them might have been because they were just really crazy yeah, some of them, well, I think no one would be, like, an actual witch, but there are people that were crazy enough to be like, oh, I'm an evil Satan follower. Follow Satan. <laughs> and be all scary like that. They're like, they're like, we will drink blood. Or, like, you know, scary, like, stuff like, yeah. that, like, sacrifices and seances and stuff. Yeah, and weird things, like, like those but, are... Like, most people were, like, just normal. And then they, me- and they messed up once. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like literally, one mess up, you're like dying. What's this? A book? I'm gonna see if I can read it. I think. Oh no, I can't. The ironic <laughs> thing is, uh, they left England because they wanted freedom, right? Yeah, and, and then that happened. And then that happened, which is like literally not freedom and, at all. And the thing is that this was, like, I guess what's it? What's a, I'm trying to think of a like the correct word to use here authorized this was yeah this was authorized by the courts of massachusetts which is ridiculous for well because most of them were in plymouth and salem and it it was literally like legally done these people were legally it's immoral but it was legal at the time because of how they did it they were accused in court and found guilty it's By no evidence, no evidence at ridiculous. all. Ridiculous. They were guilty into, until proven innocent, which now we've changed now our court system because guilty. of that. Like that has caused us to have a judicial system that we do. Sure, there are flaws, but we're all human, and so we make our own judgments sometimes. So right, that happens. But you should be glad that if you are innocent then you won't instantly be guilty until you're proven innocent. it will be the other way around. Very true. So, uh, do you have anything else about witches? Uh, no, I don't. I just have one more thing to say. So, we've learned today that witches, most of them were normal people that were really nice and really sweet. And you know what else is really sweet? Watermelon. Everything today has connected to water. I do have to mention that since waffles 
do need water to <laughs> I want you to think about this for just one moment. When you put a waffle in a waffle iron, what comes out of said waffle iron? Steam. Steam. Steam is water. Steam. Everything has water. Steam is water in a gas in a gas form. form. Yeah. A, wait, gaseous form. <laughs> A gaseous form. A gaseous form. A gaseous. That That's sounds so a, fancy, but also also weird. Weird. <laughs> Anyways, um, watermelon. Um, I'm I'm actually gonna search up the statistic, but I'm pretty sure that watermelons are ninety to ninety five percent water or something. I think it. I think those are cucumbers. I think it's slightly less, but I do think you're right that it is mostly water. Yeah, something something around that. Ninety two oh, percent. Right. Yeah. Water content. Uh, water is very healthy and one of the most hydrating foods you can eat. A, or, sorry, one cup of watermelon has over half a cup of water with vitamins and a bunch of other fun little minerals and stuff. So that's really cool. Yeah, I found artificial watermelon flavoring is good, but it's not watermelon. I think every artificial flavoring is nowhere near close at all especially to grape the actual flavoring yeah grape is completely different <laughs> it's literally I, it's I don't care flavor. what people say <laughs> like that is like a you made a chemical flavor that it's just a chemical that's what it is yeah it's it's actually like artificial flavorings are really bad for you like they're they're terrible for you there's some that like that are probably not quite as bad like the like some, I'm pretty sure there are some artificial flavors that are made from other foods, but don't quote me on that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, those are so not so. Well, we have this this Google result right now that says the FDA defines natural flavors as chemical flavor compounds extracted directly from plants or animals. So, so I guess I am kind of right in that way that. That not well, yeah. That there are artificial flavors, or I guess in this case, natural flavors that are made from plants and animals. But it's it's a it's like lab made, so yeah. it's very specific in the content that's in it to make a very very specific flavor. Mm-hmm. So like when they say natural flavor, you think oh it's natural, it's good, but not necessarily because they take those flavor chemicals that come from the plant or whatever it comes from and they manipulate it in a lab like that's that's literally what they do so yeah technically it becomes artificial instead of natural and artificial flavoring is literally just straight chemicals like nothing from a plant or anything see and the interesting thing too is there's a debate on if artificial um sweeteners are healthy or not because because there are some people who argue that yes, sugar is really bad for you, and artificial sweeteners let you still have that sweetness without any calorie intake. But you got to look past calories sometimes. I believe that most, if not all, artificial sweeteners are worse for you because of what is in them. What they, what the artificial sweeteners are, is probably worse for you than sugar. It does depend, and we don't have like really proof for every single one so Mm -hmm. yeah if you really want like um some sort of sweetener that's different from sugar you don't want the calories you don't want to get like sick from it and you don't want an artificial sweetener like that um i recommend like monk fruit sweetener is a really good one because it comes from a fruit (coughs) monk fruit exists and it's actually really sweet, and it tastes like sugar, and it has zero calories. Does it meditate? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Monk fruit. And then there's also, like, stevia leaf, uh, which is also pretty good. So, yeah, those two are, like, completely natural. Not natural flavoring. They don't go through a lab. They're, they're natural, natural. So, yeah. Interesting. Very you know what else is interesting? The fact that a watermelon is essentially water, right? You got to think about this. Um, when you go outside to water your plants, the plants are obviously going to take water to live, right? But, like, 
the thing is when a watermelon plant grows it's getting i don't know how this works but it's either getting all of its water from the water that you give it from the ground or it's creating its own water which i find really interesting because like most watermelons are huge and like watermelon plants make a lot of watermelons before they're like before they die or before winter well actually yeah that that is an interesting thought cuz if you think about it every other fruit and vegetable plant they use water and they also use um sunlight to photosynthesize and make more cells so they grow by using sunlight and water and i think it's interesting because we also need sunlight. We also need water. But we have an added thing where we need calorie intake and vitamins and minerals from food. Well, plants don't need that. Mm-hmm. They get the, all the vitamins or nutrients that they need from sunlight and soil. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, they, they need different nutrients than we do, right? And they also don't have, like... um like the body systems that we do where we inhale oxygen and exhale uh, carbon dioxide, right? Um, It's kind of a cycle thing, right? They um, take in carbon dioxide and then they release oxygen. So it's like a cycle, right? And uh, I mean, they have found that we inhale small amounts of carbon dioxide because obviously it's in the air. But uh, plants also take in small amounts of oxygen as well so that's kind of a fun little quirky thing yeah but there is that's the magic of how the earth's plants work also if you've never had a watermelon before because i know there are people out there please please go get a watermelon unless you're allergic like that's an actual valid reason for not having a watermelon (laughs) yeah so i i think watermelon's like one of the best fruits. Go try watermelon in a freezing cold pool at a water park. While being <laughs> accused of witchcraft. And, and looking at whales, whale watching. Cooking with waffles. waffles. <laughs> <laughs> Someone, if you can draw a mental picture of that, it's, it's insanity. Beautiful. It's it, No, it's be- beautiful. Insanity beautiful can be insanity. beautiful. Yes. Exactly. So, I don't know. I think I think that's all I have on watermelon. Is there anything yeah, else you that's, have to that's say? That's everything I have. Well, this has been in a very um, insightful and water-themed episode. Quite watery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some some really good puns. Hopefully, it wasn't too dry. H two. Oh my goodness! This was fantastic. That was. Uh, <laughs> oh, my eyes are watering. That was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was funny. That was really not not too funny. That was really funny. Wow, that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we'll think of more water puns later. So. I think that's everything for today. And as always, stay random. Stay random. Adios.